Today at Engineering Newswire, we're using light to safely drive battery power, developing a hover bike for the military, and powering engines with evaporation. week at the Paris Air Show, Malloy Aeronautics revealed a deal with the U.S. Department of Defense to develop its hover bike. That's right, like as in Star Wars. The hover bike, which is similar to a quadcopter, uses four standard helicopter-style rotors and would operate in a new class of tactical reconnaissance vehicles. The company says it would even be good for commuting or aerial cattle mustering. Currently, Malloy Aeronautics is producing a third-size version of the design to help fund the full-size prototype. The smaller drone version, which is available to consumers, uses electric motors and is controlled with a standard RC helicopter controller. The full-size hoverbike uses a fly-by-wire system and a throttle exactly like those on motorcycles. To date, the bike has only been tested while tethered to the ground to prevent it from flying too high, but the company plans on beginning flight tests in the coming months. After successfully testing the bike, a final engineering prototype will be submitted to aviation certification authorities. It is expected to sell for around $55,000, but if you would like to buy a prototype now to do your own testing, the company is open to discussions. No matter where you land on the impending global energy crisis, we can all agree on a need to explore and improve new ways to tap into more sustainable power. Well now, researchers at the Indian Institute of Science Education and Research have come up with a way to use solar and artificial light to safely drive battery power. They call it the photo battery, and it uses light and titanium nitride for the anode. Metal ion batteries power most of our gadgets, but they take a long time to charge, and sometimes they even overheat and Catch fire. It's like gruesome. These problems are often related to the unstable material used for the anode. The researchers developed a battery with a titanium nitride photoanode that is really stable and thus far safer than conventional options. Under normal indoor lighting, it discharged electric current and recharged within 30 seconds without an external power source. The photo battery worked for more than 100 cycles and is powered LEDs and this rudimentary fan that you're seeing in the video. While they're not strong enough to run commercial devices, the design is a promising first step toward more sustainable and safer battery technology. Columbia University scientists have developed two novel devices that derive power directly from evaporation. A floating piston-driven engine and a rotary engine that drives a miniature car that they call Ava. Ava? Evaporation. See what you did there, Melissa. Cute. Last year, researchers found that when bacterial spores shrink and swell with changing humidity, they can push and pull other objects forcefully. To build a floating, piston-driven engine, the researchers glued spores to both sides of a thin, double-sided plastic tape. Think of a cassette tape, creating a dashed line of spores. They did the same on the opposite side of the tape, but offset the line so dashes on one side overlap with gaps on the other. When dry air shrinks the spores, the spore-covered dashes curve. This transforms the tape from straight to wavy, shortening the tape. If one or both ends of the tape are anchored, the tape tugs on whatever it's attached to. When the air is moist, the tape extends, releasing the force. The result is a new type of artificial muscle that is controlled by changing humidity. It is a self-sustaining cycle of motion. The team's other new evaporation-driven engine is a moisture mill. They're just killing it with the names. The mill contains a plastic wheel with protruding tabs of tape, covered on one side with the spores. Half the wheel sits in the dry air, causing the tabs to curve, and the other half sits in a humid environment where the tabs straighten. Rotating the wheel continuously, just like a rotary engine. The researchers were even able to power a car. A really, really small toy car. It was, it was that Ava, that Ava chick, Melissa mentioned before. But in the future, it may be possible to use the technology to propel a full-size car. When evaporation energy is scaled up, it might even be able to produce electricity from giant floating power generators sitting on the water. Do you have store ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm Melissa Fossbrenner and this has been your Engineering Newswire.